Yeah, I'm still here. Oh. Oh, you're, are you are you you uh, are sharing your screen, um, which is good because that means I'll be able to see it. Yeah, that's good. Let's just see. I'm going to add just a couple of finishing touches to my thing, and then I'll be right there in on your stream. You can't? Why not? So you're starting a new game? Awesome. Physics. Yes. <laughs> what is your animal um, preference? Let's go with cat. Oh, I like the black one. Is your favorite eye color white? Is that really red? Oh, that's weird. Those slide that's no, I I that that slider system. It's very weird. It's kind of hard for me to grasp because I I thought I was under the impression that it was red, green, and and blue. Yeah, but a lot of times the color sliders it's three sliders of red, green, and blue, and then um whatever color you want really. I was just like, I was just like, cause um when you set it to max color, usually most of the time it's it's either black or it's white, and I can't remember which is which. Is there like, is there like prison farm? <laughs> is there like, Indu River Valley civilization farm? Is that your grandpa? Actually, it starts off in Harvest Moon with your grandpa dying, which which Stardew Valley takes heavy inspiration from. Yeah, it's almost like a Harvest Moon game. Nah. 
Now listen close, Shuddy. Suck my b- Did you did you just say JoJo? Is that a JoJo reference? End me. End my fate. End end me. Is that the cubicle? Is that you in the cubicle? Wow. Yo, you got your smash invite? Oh, so that's going to be like your tutorial guide? Oh. I think they used to... They used to do that do that in one of the older Stardew Valley... Uh, I mean, uh, one of the older Harvest Moon games. Um, basically, it'd be like... Uh, the family friend who's still there in the town. They'd kind of tell you how to do everything at first. Oh, that's dumb. Oh, that's dumb. Why couldn't they do it like Undertale? I didn't say Underhero, I said Undertale. Undertale is not a side scroller, it's an RPG. I'm going to stab you with your own spine. Oh, that's the one everyone wants to hook up with, right? Can you hook up with her anyways? How easy is the mod to install? <laughs> Do you have the mod? Why not? Why not? What's the point in having a carpenter when you can literally just rip the windows off and just move them yourself? What, you didn't think I, I did, you thought I didn't know about the windows? <laughs> You've seen the comic? You've actually seen that comic, like for reals? I, you see, I saw that comic because, um, there's this website 
that makes, like, video game parody comics. And, like, maybe, like, once a year or something, I'll just go and I'll read the entire website. And they made that comic. Awkward Zombie. They've made lots of comics. They made an Ace Attorney comic. They've made multiple Ace Attorney comics. I love Awkward Zombie. And they made that comic. The one about the window. Like what? As a Luigi? <laughs> Did I send you that video? The Hey Mario video? I'm going to send it to you. Just give me like, I need just like a couple more seconds. So I can, I can just add a little clean, clean finish up touch and save as button because we're gonna save this as um See, I was going to draw Madeline again, and then I decided not to. Because I didn't want to. What happened? Perfect. Turn off birthdays. That's a mod. That's not Did you hear it? Okay, good. That means that was the thing. Yeah, it looks pretty weird. mouse and keyboard yeah it certainly looks like the kind of game you'd want to use a mouse and keyboard for how, 
How do you accidentally waste an hour and ten minutes? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, it's not like I would have left. Like, like, what the hell would I do if not be here? Why would I want to do that? <laughs> it's not like. Why would I want to do that? Why would I ever give a crud about my own well being? In the game? Huh. So who are you gonna try to date in this game? Aren't, like, most of the characters dateable characters? And if you have the right mods, aren't all the characters dateable characters? Did you see the video? Okay, okay, so, the background, about 13 years ago, there was this fan-made sex ed Mario video, <laughs> and that, that audio came from that. So you're gonna try to date her? <laughs> Are you gonna date the dateable alcoholic? Aw oh, cool, my gum's doing that thing again. Are you gonna try to date her? Are you gonna try to date him? Are you going to try to date him? <laughs> Are you going to try to date her? <laughs> Are you going to try to date Demon Magic Girl? Are you going to try to date the email?
So is that not like the most amazing Mario video you've ever seen? Are you going to try to date her? Are you going to try to date her? Is that Penny's sister? Who's more interesting? So it's... So it's you, but girl? Are you going to try to date her? Drugs make everything better. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! <laughs> shit. I, I, just, I, I was scrolling through my, my YouTube, my favorites list, because I don't know what the fuck I have in there. And I saw this video with this like really cryptic title, and it was two seconds long. And I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And I watched it, and holy shit, dude! It's a, it's amazing. I just did. Did you get it? Are you going to try to date her? <laughs> the what? <laughs> okay, that's a- that's only slightly more- <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> so how would you rate that video scale of uh, one one to ten? My, my YouTube favorites, it's pretty fucking, I don't, like, this is, like, Jesus Christ, there's a lot of shit in here. So, are you gonna try to date him? How do you access- it's a seven second video, dude! Okay, who cares, it's 23 seconds, it's like the most fucking fantastic 23 seconds. Oh, that's- Oh! Wait. More expen more expensive and worse quality. So it's just a it's just a regular it's just America. It's just consumer grade product.
What what's so funny? <laughs> I love that one. Did I already send it to you? I feel like I've already sent it to you. I I feel like I've already sent to you the Mario one. You know, the Mario one's the best one. He's like, holy cannoli, kids, I'm Mario. And I'm telling you, if you're not watching the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, you're going to turn into a Goomba. <laughs> Join me, Luigi, Princess Toadstool, and Toad. We're going to kick some Koopa. Woo! Are you going to date him? But are you going to? There's a mod that, there's a mod that makes all the Pokemon hot. Yeah, the mod, uh, the mod, it turns all the Pokemon into anime girls. It's called Moemon. Wait, you've played Moemon? What's wrong with you? I, I don't... That doesn't sound right. Are you gonna date her? Oh my god. I was scrolling through my favorites list and I found something that's so like god fucking fantastic. I have not heard of this in such a long time, dude. I gotta send it to you. It's just, it's, it's a couple links down. I'm Oh no, it looks like some of the videos I had favorited are now private or deleted. When you give squeeze, you get make a thing out of that say, fuck you. <laughs> Um, on, on my end, I was completely on. Come on, give it a play. I love that one.
Oh, here's a good one. Screen co op, whoa. Oh. Dude, this is this is like hurting. I'm going through my, my watch later videos and I'm finding like private video, deleted video. This video is not available because the account associated with it has been terminated. Like, this- that's, like, hurting, yo! Like... Um, so are you gonna date that guy? Oh, so are you gonna date that guy? Okay, so fun fact. Um, I believe the, uh, I believe the, the Mario and the Luigi voices in that video are a combination of two different voice actors. Okay, so I realized the way I said that might seem like no shit, Sherlock, but I mean, both Mario and, like, Mario's voiced by two different guys. And then Luigi is also voiced by two different guys. And one of the guys voices them both. Like, it's a combination of uh, voice clips from the Mario World cartoon, along with this guy called Vine Sauce, who does a pretty rockin' spot on impression of the Mario and Luigi voices from that cartoon. I don't think I have. Yeah. Please tell me you looked it up. A lot of fan art. Oh, that's even less surprising. Yeah, that's it's not that surprising.
Did you read the second chapter? Okay, so remember that one vine that was real famous? Yo, remember that one vine that was real famous? Um, it is Wednesday, my dude. So, um, uh, that guy has a YouTube channel. And I found out I was subscribed to it. Okay, so, so let me tell you what happened, all right? So like, like last month, I'm scrolling through my YouTube and I stumble across a try not to laugh video. Like it's, it's, it's called, um, uh, if I laugh, the video ends. And it was like part like 20 something or something, right? And I was like, what the hell is this? And uh, I click on it. And this it's a bunch of like meme videos. And you could see the dude like smiling and he's like, you could see him like, like grinning and like he, he's smirking throughout the whole video, right? But then it plays the it's Wednesday, my dude clip, right? And the guy, he just looks at the camera and he's like, That's me! And like, points to himself. And I'm like, What? And then I go down and I look. And I, and I see that the subscribe button has already been clicked. And the bell icon is all ho hollowed out. And I'm like, I'm subscribed to this guy. And I'm like, wait, is this guy really? It's Wednesday, my dude? So I went to videos and I scroll way the fuck down. And guess what I find? It is Wednesday, my dudes. Uh... And he has like a bunch of different Wednesday, my dudes videos. Are you gonna date him? He went to fucking hell. Did you just give him a seashell? Oh. Can you give him like garlic? <laughs> so will he hate you if you give him garlic? Wow. Can you give him like... Wooden stakes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh thank god. If you post it in the Discord, I would just ban you. On the spot, dude. No hesitation. Alright, so time to go read this to your stream. Alright, fine. Then do you want me to look up some fucking... Some Sonic fanfic. <laughs> oh, I didn't say good. I'm I'm talking like the saucy like Sonic fuck Amy. <laughs> oh my god. No, I, I'm not going to because the amount of fucking Sonic AUs that exist uh, or Sonic no not Sonic AUs I meant Sonic OCs 
so god they're so garbage so let's so uh well, let's think what topics would get you banned on twitch nah i don't want to read the story i have it opened up on my phone and i'm like yeah i don't feel like doing this after all but I will look up some uh, Reddit lawyer stories, so that's great. You know which Reddit lawyer, st Reddit stories are pretty fucking great. The ones on Tree Law. It's the it's it's beautiful. That's what it is. I did not. I was gonna make one with you. Um, and then we didn't. I'm sure if I knew what the fuck Wattpad was, I might have had one. Um, but I, I didn't. I didn't hear about Wattpad until, like, middle school. Oh no, you're brony? Oh no, you're- Oh no, you're brony, I say. I literally have, like, pony drawings in my notebook. A little late, but this is one of my dad's favorite stories. So he came out of state on business, driving through some no-name town. When he goes through an intersection, suddenly a cop pulls him over, saying he ran a stop sign and ticketed him. My dad insisted there was not any stop sign, but the cop did not listen. Pissed, he went back to the intersection, and he saw that there was a stop sign. Hidden behind a tree and twisted in the wrong direction. Even more pissed, he went to a convenience store that was in sight of the intersection and bought a disposable camera while the clerk laughed because he saw what happened and knew what's up. Luckily, my dad had to be back there in a few weeks for work. The cop assumed that someone with out-of-state plates would just pay the ticket, and they were shocked when the dad turned up in court, calmly presented his evidence to the judge, and strolled out five minutes scot-free. wasn't my case, but in the criminal docket court one morning, the accused wore a pair of very unique custom-made red cowboy boots. Stolen from the house he was accused of robbing. Wore them to court to plead not guilty. The prosecutor was laughing. Oh my god, that gameplay style. I just looked at your screen to when you were at the fishing mini game, and I was like, "Wow, that's f I can't believe you're fucking playing Mario drinks a glass of milk." What you've never, you've never heard of Mario drinks a glass of milk?
I'll, I'll have to send you some videos and Mario drinks a glass of milk then. Why do you think I don't want to read through it? Are you, are you fishing? Wow, I love Animal Crossing. In high school, a girl had a pair of custom shoes stolen. I think they were fancy, colorful Nikes. The girl who stole them wore them to school the next day, and that's how she got busted. She insisted she just happened to get the same pair of shoes. They had the original girl's name in them. They did not have remotely similar names. Don't know. Same thing happened to my future husband. He was called as a witness against the guy accused of breaking into his apartment. He stole clothes, stereo, TVs, etc. So he's up on the stand and the guy's lawyer asks him why he believes this man uh, was the person that broke into his apartment. And he's like, well, he's wearing my jacket. Everybody laughs. And it's like my future hubby says, no, really, it's my jacket. It has my name written on the tag. Turns out the guy is wearing the stolen jacket that my husband has been given as a safety award at his work. It has his company's logo on it and the safety slogan. There are about 20 guys on the crew that want him, and the office gal had written their last names on the tag when she handed them out. The judge asked the bailiff to check the tag. Bailiff has the guy stand up and looks at the tag says, Yes, judge, it has the witness's last name written on the tag. Case closed. Guy changed his plea to guilty. I just got some clothes back, but that was it, nothing else. I used to work in a baby daddy court as a caseworker. This guy kept telling me I used to work in quote unquote baby daddy court as a caseworker. This guy kept telling me, the mother of the child, and anyone who would listen, that the baby wasn't his. When they went before the judge, the judge confirmed through DNA testing that he wasn't the dad. Dude, turn ar dude turned around and took off his jacket. His shirt said, not the father. Because this, because I'm like trying to find a good one. Because a lot of these are just filler crap. 
They're not all good. They're not all good, and then a lot of these are also comments. I don't think that's how it works. Um, I got a violation put against my name for land I didn't own. It was next to the land next to mine. It was the land next to mine owned by the city. I took pictures of how the violation was posted on the city's land. How the city's land was in violation of grass height laws. It's orientation to my land. How the violation did not have my lot's number, but the city's lot number. And brought the posted violation to court with me. Got up to the stand, explained myself, and presented my pictures. The inspector who wrote that violation stood and called me by a name that wasn't mine and showed pictures of a busted up car with a bunch of weeds on it I had never seen before. The judge raised her eyebrows and asked what the justice was. He said an address that was across town from mine. I say I do not own that land. And she removes the fine. Case dismissed. Not the most abreast my case moment, but a memorable one. There was a deposition of a witness in a room full of attorneys. Witnesses asked if he knows or has spoken with any of the attorneys in the room before the deposition. Witness responds he knows attorney X because sometimes they go to the same parties and snort, snort coke together. Needless to say, attorney X had an immediate meltdown. Good transcript, good transcript to keep. Some more exciting ones. When I was in law school, I clerked for a criminal defense legal clinic. We had an assault and battery crime where there was only one witness to the crime, which was the victim. I was sitting at the defense table with the actual attorney, another law student that worked on the case with me, and the defendant. We were all in similar looking suits as a matter of unplanned coincidence. The victim was asked to identify the person who committed the assault in court, and she pointed to me and not the defendant. Our attorney asked several times if she was really pointing to me and if she was sure, and she said yes. The prosecutor was visibly upset, and the trial pretty much ended there as, there was, as this was a bench trial and not with a journey. I was, it was never discussed or admitted to, but I suspect our attorney purposefully had me there because I did have a passing resemblance to the defendant. <laughs> was that not a good one? In high school, we had a mock trial based on Romeo and Juliet. The prosecution attempted to pin the blame on a predetermined character, uh, Benvolio, in my case. While the defense tried to prove it wasn't him, and instead there was, and instead was a suicide. 
the only rule was that the two teams could not talk to each other until the trial. We started a huge misinformation campaign where we said that one guy, let's call him Jake, uh, was Benvolio, when in fact it was another guy called Sam. But what ended up, what ended up happening was the very first question I asked was to point to a was to point out uh, Benvolio, and they pointed it to Jake. I asked multiple times. They were like, "Yeah, Jake's Benvolio." It was not. It was the most satisfying moment in that class. I have. I was part of the jury because I missed school the day that we got to pick roles. And it fucking sucked because uh, the defense was garbage. And my friend played the defendant. In in my in my uh, I think it was my seventh grade language arts class in Miss Fung's class we got Ricky Ticky Tavi <laughs> mock trial. It was an accident a few years ago. Other guy's fault. He got a ticket for unsafe left turn. And I got a ticket because I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. In the section on the ticket, the cop inadvertently wrote, Did wear seatbelt while operating motor vehicle. When I got to court, the judge asked how I wanted to plead. I asked the judge if I could ask a question first. He said, sure. I stated, the ticket says I did wear my seatbelt while operating motor vehicle. And if that's the case, I want to plead guilty. The judge looks down at the ticket, looks back at me, and says, Case dismissed. Have a good day. I did. Yes, he probably did. Yeah, I was on fucking Ricky Ticky Tavi. Did you read Ricky Ticky Tavi? Okay, Ricky Ticky Tavi. It's the story about a. Uh, I think it's about a ferret. Who uh, kills a snake and the snake babies, to because to like defend his land or something. Um. And our our uh, our mock trial was like on whether or not Ricky Ticky Taffy was a murderer. <laughs> well, well, no, no, it was self defense because the snake was pure blooded evil, and he was doing it to defend his fucking family. <laughs> Like his owners, like his ferret owners, uh, that was the good argument that the defense didn't make, and it was all downhill for Ricky Ticky Tavi. Um, really bad ones that didn't hold up because their witnesses were garbage. Um, they said a lot of bad things that really didn't help the case. I felt internal dread throughout the entire trial because I'm like, this looks not good on Ricky Ticky at all. Um. Oh no, the case ended in the hung jury.
Oh no. Um, I think she did, but I wasn't there that day. So I got to be a part of the jury and do nothing and say that Ricky Ticky Tavi was guilty. That Ricky Ticky Tavi was guilty. Because literally all the fucking evidence, all the witnesses, and both the lawyers pretty much made it obvious that Ricky Ticky Tabby was a murderer. Yeah? I was in court on a speeding ticket, and the case before mine was Fred, the town drunk. It went like this. Judge. Hey Fred, the charges here say you were arrested Saturday night in town drunk. How do you plead, Fred? I don't know. What do you mean, Fred? Were you in town Saturday night or not? Well, that's what I don't know. I have no idea where I was Saturday night. But if I was in town, I damn sure was drunk. <laughs> okay, Fred, I'll just $25, son. <laughs> so what were you about to say? Do you like how I fucking cameo from best voice acting? As a clerk in the district attorney office a few years ago, there was a battery case with a victim, addict wandering the streets like depicting fights, got into an altercation, and had his hand chopped off by the defendant's machete. The day the victim came in to testify, the clerk acted and raised his hand to tell the whole truth, etc. And when he raised the handless snub, every single juror gasped for air, and we knew conviction was on the way. Oh, uh, basically, this druggie, um, this druggie, uh, um, they went to court, uh, they were the victim, uh, because they got into a fight and their hand got chopped off, and so when they went to raise their hand to, like, you know, like, swear in the truth or whatever, everyone knew that they, the other person was going to be found guilty because they didn't have a fucking hand. <laughs> okay. I found this this one right here. It's like 
This may not apply, but there's a Judge Judy episode where a high school girl is suing two boys from her school for taking her backpack and stealing various valuables out of it. And something like the following conversation happened. Judge Judy, and what was taken from your backpack? Girl, my phone, my money, my headphones. Boy one. No, they weren't. Judge Judy, excuse me? There weren't any headphones in the backpack. Oh, we're gonna name it Cat Bud, obviously. Cat Bud. D A S T B U D. Fucking cat bud. I love cat bud. Why don't you just reinstall them? You know, be all spooky. Um, yeah, I am. I was reading this one, and it's like, it was really, really awful. Like, it, it's a, like, it's a, it's a great, great story, but like, the events in it that happened were awful. Yeah, so to, uh, summarize, um, basically, this mom raised her kid as a sex toy. Uh-huh. And basically, th um, the kid exploded in court, like, calling out the mom. Um, and then after the kid exploded, the defense for the mom exploded on the mom. <laughs> They, the, the way they described it was, the way they described it in the story was, um, was, uh,
um, it was like, it was like, um, like the winning play, except the other team made it for you. Like, that's how it was described, so. They also said that they're pretty sure that the judge let all that bullshit happen in court so the truth would come out. Because, like, you're not really supposed to do that whole explode in court thing. Yeah, so, uh, that happened. Yeah. So then fucking do it, coward. <laughs> Buy the backpack and then give him shells. Be gay. Invite the drunk. <laughs> so... Just, just buy the backpack and then give him random shit you find on the floor. Yo, this is fucking music! <laughs> Isn't that why you're farming? Um, so I, I read this one, and it's, 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 it was kind of long, and it wasn't too interesting, but basically what happened was, this guy, he stole some stuff, but he didn't steal as much as the guy is saying he stole. Like, he's being accused of stealing much more than he actually stole. Um, and he's like, no, I didn't do that. He's like, especially not these really expensive coins. I definitely didn't touch those. And so they go to court, and the guy's like, 
you took these coins that are really fucking expensive, and and the judge happened to be like a fucking coin wizard, and he's like, that's fucking bullshit. This coin does not cost that much money. It costs like twenty five dollars. Fuck you and fuck your bullshit. It's a judge. He gets to do whatever the fuck he wants in his court. Well, aren't you supposed to have hobbies? I think you are. I don't have a chat. I'm not streaming. Oh.
What? You have a sword. I don't remember Harvest Moon having swords. This is Nitwaru. Oh no, I I was reading one. Um basically uh, so this dude showed up uh to court to see if the uh Um, basically this dude shows up to court, um, for, over child support, over, over a one night stand, um, and, and he's, and, uh, and the, the lady has, like, really aggressive, super expensive lawyer, and the dude's like, yeah, no, um, I, I think you could tell from these texts I sent her, and also this, document I got from the doctors uh, about my uh, like vasectomy I think it's called that I am not in fact the baby's dad um, so that was a, a story Can really Okay, I found one. This is gonna sound crazy, but in college I got a ticket every day for the week of parking. I got a ticket every day of the week for parking in my driveway. Same cop every day. My girlfriend's car too. It was a small apartment building which had a blacktop parking lot along the side of the building. The police ticketed every vehicle parked in our assigned parking spots for blocking the sidewalk. There was no sidewalk. It was a blacktop parking lot. I was an aspiring student of the law, and I knew I could argue this. Plus, I didn't have money to pay all these tickets. I pled not guilty, got a court date, and continued to collect the tickets. I got the cop on the stand and showed him a series of pictures and asked questions about this invisible sidewalk. He contradicted himself several times and admitted he ticketed every car he parked there, whether or not it was blocking the invisible sidewalk or not. I was up there for about a half an hour for parking tickets. The judge was laughing, and finally, he asked me to approach. He asked me if I dismissed all the tickets and told the cop to stop, would I stop asking questions and leave the court? I agreed. The next week, my girlfriend went in with her stack of tickets and me. Same judge, same cop. They were both looking at me. As we walked in, I said, watch this, baby. I'm gonna make this judge dismiss the tickets. When it was her turn to argue, I walked up with her. She said, Your Honor, I, before she could finish, the judge said, Tickets are void. Next case. I was proud. She was just baffled at the black magic I just sprinkled on her.
Lawyers are great, except, you know, most of the time. I'm not a lawyer, but my friend's sister went to court over a moving violation. She's an engine tuner, and had built herself a beautiful first-gen Mitsubi Eclipse with a 6700 horsepower at the wheels. This car inevitably attracted the attention of the local law enforcement, who pulled her over with no fewer than eight cruisers after some slightly aggressive acceleration around the left turn. During cross-examination, she asked the officer who made the call why exactly she had been pulled over. I heard the engine rev- I heard the engine revving, and I saw you spinning the tires and sliding around the corner. To be clear, officers, which tires were spinning? The rear tires. So I was spinning the rear tires, and it was the back end that swung around- swung out? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. And you're sure that's what you saw? Clear as day, ma'am. The light turned green, you stepped on the gas, and the rear tires broke loose into power. The rear tires broke loose into power? There's no doubt in your mind that's exactly what happened? None at all. Your Honor, this officer's either lying or he's hallucinating. My car is front wheel drive. Oh my god. I'm reading the comments, right? And so, you know, eyewitness testimony is never reliable in the first place. People can say utterly incorrect things in good faith because memories are inherently not faithful. But we start when I'm when I'm when I'm scrolling down. Have you seen the movie My Cousin Vinny? It's a lawyer movie and it's it's great because all the comments are references to my cousin Vinny. Because there's this great scene where the 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 lead, the main the main lead, the the lawyer, he calls up his girlfriend who happens to be an expert on cars, and then she proves her expertise, and then she proves how it could not have been the the defendant's car. And how it, in fact, must have been this other car that had been arrested for something else in another city. And it's, and it's like this amazing fucking scene. So I'm going through the comments, it's like, did it have positive traction? Was it also metallic mint green? It's a bullshit question. Was it being driven by Utes? <laughs> Ute. Nineteen sixty-four Buick Skylark. How long does it take you to make your Ute? No self-respecting Southerner use instant grits. No, it's not. It had Ralph Macchio as one of the main characters. Nope. Oh, it- Oh, here we go. They actually put, um, part of the script in, uh, in- in the comments so I can read to you this beautiful- Part of this beautiful scene, anyways. The car that made these two equal length tire marks had positive traction. You can't make those marks without positive traction, which was not available in the 60 few Buick Skylark. And why not? And what is positive traction? It's a limited slip differential which distributes power equally to both the left and right tires. The 64 Skylark had a regular differential, which anyone who knows 
which anyone who's been stuck in the mud in Alabama knows, you step on the gas, one tire spin, the other tire does nothing. That's right. Is that it? No, there's more. You see, when the left tire mark goes up on the curb and the right tire mark stays flat and even, well, the 64 Skylark had a solid real axle. So when the left tire would go up on the curb, the right tire would tilt out and ride along its edge. But that didn't happen here. The tire mark stayed flat and even. This car had an independent rear suspension. Now, in the 60s, there were only two cars made in America that had positive traction and independent rear suspension and enough power to make these marks. One which was the Corvette, which could never be confused with the Buick Skylark, and the other had the same body, length, height, width, and weight, wheelbase, and wheel track as the 64 Skylark, and that was the 1963 Pontiac Tempest. And because both cars were made by GM, were both cars available in metallic mint green? They were. And that, that's, that's pretty much the scene. It's be it's a beautiful scene to watch with your own two eyes. I, I think it might be available to stream for free online. I think. I meant legally. I meant legally. What? Um, well, I mean, I could say stuff. Yeah, possibly, perhaps. I could, I could do this. What? One Mississippi. All right, you got a second. Holding on. Was hired late one day in a traffic case set for jury trial the following morning. Usually the court will say no worries and reset the case to give you time to prepare. I should have expecting just this. When I told the judge that I'd just been hired less than 24 hours ago, she announced aloud in court and in front of the jury panel that my client knew what she did and we were going to have this trial right now. I looked at the prosecutor, expecting him to agree that we should proceed for a future date, but he was afraid of the judge and not a very good prosecutor anyway, so he just shrugged. I got mad and said, okay then, let's pick this jury. I hadn't even seen the police report yet. I only knew my client was accused of passing a stop school bus on the right side shoulder, which is about as dangerous a move you can do and not end up in jail. Shitty prosecutor calls two police witnesses who say they sell the car past the bus improperly. The prosecution rests. I wait until the police left to resume their duties. When the judge looked to see if I wanted to call any witnesses, I said, I'm going to need to court I'm going to need to court to direct a verdict of not guilty from the verdict. The angry judge was losing her cool. What are you talking about, counsel? Judge, we just heard from two witnesses about someone passing a school bus, but neither one of them indicated that my client was anywhere near there. The prosecutor had made a rookie mistake. We got to check in court ID off his list twice. The judge sighed. She had bullied me into this horseshit trial, total denial of my client's Sixth Amendment right to counsel, and had prejudiced the jury with her she knows what she did remark, and wasted a couple thousand taxpayers' dollars in doing it. The court directs the jury to return a verdict of not guilty. I didn't even wait for them to do it. I grabbed my client by the arm, got out there fast, pausing to wink at the jury on the way out the door. Someone who had watched the entire thing from the gallery followed me out to the parking lot and hired me for a serious family on the spot. I've appeared in front of that judge dozens of times since then, and she's not fucked with me once. <laughs> yeah. 
Yo, this is some fucking music. <laughs> what is this? This isn't Terraria. It looks kind of like it. Indeed, verily I say, ergo. <laughs> oh, that's the best. I love Edgeworth. Fun fact, that scene's also in the anime. But I don't think he says the indeed, verily, ergo. But he does do, he does do the objection and it's like what is it edward and he's like i was expecting to uh, come up with something while i said that i did not it's like oh well i read objection <laughs> uh he does that in the anime and it's freaking amazing I have two, one on my own and one someone else's. In mine, my client was accused of not leaving this woman alone when she wanted no contact with him. He swore that they were dating and she'd call the police when she got mad. She swore she wanted nothing to do with him. She had a photo of her, on her phone of him sitting on a porch to prove that he'd come around without her consent. I asked permission from the judge to look at the photos before and after to get contacts. Lo and behold, she had hundreds of photos of him eating dinner with her, sitting on her couch, wearing her undergarments. It was glorious. And the other colleague was questioning a police officer about a consensual encounter with a defendant. Officer claimed that he in no way intimidated the client and that the client was free to walk away at any point. My colleague said, Officer, you think based on what you said and how you acted that any person in this room under those circumstances would feel like they could walk away? The officer said yes, and the full courtroom audience started laughing. Yeah. What? I'm a cat butt! I love cats. Okay, so, I know this is weird, but actual lawyer here, sitting second chair, complex medical malpractice trial. Stay with me here. In my state, we have a wide open direct examination and wide open cross examination, which means the first time up, lawyers can ask any question 
subject to the rules of evidence. But on redirect, you are limited to only questions covered right before you got up in cross-exam. Then redirect is limited to what was discussed before you, etc. So the first time each side questions a witness, you can cover any subject. But the second and subsequent times, you are limited to subjects the lawyers before you covered. You can't open new doors. Also, you can't use leading questions on direct exam, but you can use them on cross exam and redirect and recross. Leading questions are very powerful when you have complex facts to explain to a jury of 12, especially with experts who usually have trouble explaining things to people. So there's this super smart hired gun doctor, well known in the legal community, hired by the other side on direct exam. And the l young lawyer who calls him has the idea that he will do a very short direct and let us destroy the guy on cross. And then he can get back up and rehack them on redirect where he can ask about leading questions about everything we talked about. He gets up and establishes credibility and qualifications and then passes the witness. The older lawyer I was working on then gets up. Hello, Dr. S. You're looking very fit today. Are you exercising? Ah, yes, Mr. Rev. We started biking quite a bit. How's your wife doing, Dr. S? She's great. She just started a new job last week. Seems to enjoy it. Well, that's great. Thanks for coming down today. No further questions. Thus, the other side was now limited to the above subjects only in their redirect. The other lawyer turned the color of tomato as soon as that mistake hit him. He stood up and asked to approach and asked to us to dismiss the case. <laughs> Oh wow, we're almost at our 2 a.m. mark. Not a lawyer, this happened to a friend of mine. He was on a motorcycle riding down the road near a shopping center. A madam in a large car was coming the opposite way, turned in front of him against the traffic light. He t-boned her, right around where the pillar between front and back of the car is. He obviously stopped right where he landed. Critical injuries will do that to you. She didn't. She kept going right into the car park and parked the car. Then came out to s came out to the scene to scream abuse at him. He ended up in the hospital with broken bones, many broken bones. While he was recuperating, Madam decided to sue him for the repairs to a car. Now we're in Australia. Usually this is done in the background by insurance companies. Rarely does it end up with the drivers in court. But because Madam was clearly in the wrong and had been given tickets at the crime scene, 
at the scene to prove it. Obviously, her insurance, if she had any, had turned her down. Madam is laying her case out. It was my friend's fault purely because he was a dirty, filthy motorcyclist. He deserved it. She deserved to get her car back and fixed. Again, it was all his fault. She, she blameless little soul, had very, had a terribly hard time with the car. And he, that filthy scumbag, deserved to pay. In fact, all motorcyclists were dirty, filthy scumbags and deserved whatever bad things happened to him. She's on a little rampage. My friend was on crutches. Blaster on several limbs. She goes on. The judge's face is getting redder and redder. The judge didn't even ask my friends any questions. He glared at the, at the woman and started lending up, listing off penalties. Failure to yield. Failure to stop after an accident. Running the red light. Speeding. Driving unlicensed. Driving unregistered. He denied her claim for car damage and instead awarded the friend damages. She was banned from driving for several years. She had to pay back a ton of fines and best we are when she started to spark up after hearing the ruling she copped a, a couple days content of court turns out the judge was a dirty filthy scumbag motorcyclist himself I once got out of a noise violation ticket. I was driving around, had my music in my car up. Cop pulls me over, gives me a ticket for the noise violation. It wasn't even that loud, you couldn't hear it outside my car, my car, but my windows were down, so whatever. So go to the court. Uh, my defense is, if the ice cream man can drive around blaring that creepy music, I can listen to my radio. <laughs> Just try to keep a straight face, but I got out of a ticket. They're like stuck in the wall. My dad told me the story about the ticket he got. The cop who pulled him over ba basically insinuated that she only pulled him over because although everyone else was going the same speed, 
he had out of state plates. And for that reason, he challenged it. The day before the trial, he get he called the police office to get the ticket number. Because he misplaced the copy. Somehow this resulted in the copy being pulled from the case. And not being put back in. So when the judge asked the officer for the ticket, she could not produce it. It was the week before Christmas and my father said, says the judge looked at him and said, Sir, do you believe in Santa Claus? To which he responded with a grin, Yes, sir, I do. And the judge said, Merry Christmas, dismissed. It's a uh, one forty one. Oh fuck, I didn't even realize the music changed, I just thought the music stopped. But then I heard the birds. Okay, so I read this one, and uh, this dude, he quit his job, and then, like, two days later, someone burned it down, pretty much. But they found a piece of glass with a footprint on it, and that footprint matched his shoe. So they took his shoes as evidence. But then when he went in for court, they found out that the footprint they found was too small for his size shoe. 
Like, it was the same shoe, but it was a much smaller size. Well, they... S I don't know. Flaw. The flawed legal system. Holy shit, dude. Is that you? Are you gonna stab him? Who's that? Are you gonna date them? Um, I don't know. Don't be a, uh, one of the one that's like, don't be a dick. Don't be a super dick. I like how your eyes glow. Is that just what happens because you have, um... Wait. Is it, do your eyes just glow because, um, because you, the color you picked? Ah. Uh. Are you going to install it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but kit. God damn it. But females are the best. So are we calling it quits for the night? <laughs>